Hey there, welcome to the world of art where every brushstroke hides its own little secret. Today we're going behind the scenes to uncover six incredible stories where darkness, light, genius, and madness all blend into one masterpiece. We're diving into how the greatest artists found inspiration not just in beauty, but in the dramas that turned their works into timeless masterpieces. Let's take a trip to 17th century Amsterdam, where a young and ambitious Rembrandt, Van Rijn, is fighting for his place in the art world. Back then, his work wasn't all that popular, and to stand out, he needed something special. Rembrandt figured that playing with light and shadow would be his signature move. But how did he come to this decision? From a young age, Rembrandt was obsessed with light, how it bends, how it dances on different surfaces, how it creates mood and emotion. He would sit under tall trees, watching sunlight break through the leaves, casting playful shapes on the ground. In his studio, he began experimenting with different light sources, candles, lamps, natural daylight, observing how shadows interacted with objects, turning simple figures into something dramatic and profound. One day, his friend Jan Levens came to pose for him, and Rembrandt decided to take it a step further. He arranged several candles and lamps around the room, setting up shadows that created the illusion of movement and depth. This was his secret weapon, his way of capturing the complexity of the human soul. Portrait of Jan Levens was the result of this experiment, a painting where every ray of light and shadow asterisk tells asterisk a story. It wasn't just a portrait, it was a deep emotional dive into a person's inner world. The painting became a masterpiece and proved that his mastery of light and shadow was his true gift. Francisco Goya, Masterpieces from the Chaos of the Soul By the time Goya started creating his black paintings, he was far from the young artist who painted sunny, joyful scenes. In 1792, he fell seriously ill and the illness left him completely deaf. That blow marked a turning point in his life and career. Deafness locked him inside his own mind, cutting him off from the world of sound. Goya began to notice the darker sides of human nature, sinking deeper into his own fears and visions. This internal chaos became his new reality, and soon, he found an outlet for this silent madness in his art. But it wasn't just his illness that changed him. Spain at the time was consumed by unrest and violence. Wars, the cruelty, social injustice, all of this had a profound effect on his work. Goya watched as the country he knew was sinking into darkness, and it seemed that same darkness crept into his soul. He found it harder and harder to remain just an observer. His deafness only worsened his isolation, turning him into a witness to his own nightmares. The world around him was losing its color and light, and that same shadow began to seep into his art. The modest home, where he secluded himself in his later years, became both his studio and his refuge. On the walls of his house, Goya painted what he saw in the darkness of his mind. Nightmares, phantoms, scenes of violence and despair. In Saturn, devouring his son, he captured not only his fear of madness, but also his terror of death and the meaninglessness of existence. Each of his black paintings was like a mirror reflecting not just his own fears, but the fears of an entire nation. There's no hope in Goya's paintings, they're the soul's scream of an artist left completely alone with his demons. His brushstrokes became rougher, his colors heavier and darker. As if Goya wasn't just painting with brushes, but with his very nightmares. The black paintings aren't just works of art, they're a cry of despair. A challenge to the world and to himself. It's as if Goya was saying, look at what I see in the darkness, don't you see it too? Claude Monet, the play of light. For Monet, art wasn't just a job, it was his life. Chasing after light, movement, and shifting shadows, he spent hours studying the world around him. Oil paints became his weapon in this battle for true beauty. By mixing unimaginable colors on his palette, he created almost magical hues that he then transferred to the canvas. He worked in thin layers, applying one over the other to capture the slightest changes in light and atmosphere. His quest for perfection was so intense that Monet could stand in one spot for hours watching how the light shifted, how the sun danced on the water's surface, or how the mist slowly rose over the pond. Once, while working on his Water Lilies series, he spent an entire night by the pond trying to capture the play of moonlight on the water. 
his home in Giverny became a true light laboratory. Monet meticulously designed his gardens, planting flowers and trees to reflect and refract light in the most spectacular way. In his paintings, he aimed not just to depict the outward appearance of the flowers, but to capture their essence. How they swayed in the breeze, how they interacted with the light, these works were a true ode to light, a celebration and exaltation of it. That's where the magic of his paintings lay, they didn't just show the world, they made the viewer feel its soul. Today, his works seem alive, almost breathing, as every brushstroke, every drop of paint was applied with such passion and attention to light that they became light themselves. Monet used oil paints to convey the movement of light, its variability, and the beauty he saw all around him. And that was his little victory over time and space, capturing a moment and turning it into eternity. Salvador Dali, The Mystery of Melting Time Salvador Dali, the master of surrealism, always knew how to amaze. But probably his most memorable piece, the one that truly sticks in people's minds, is The Persistence of Memory. This painting really flipped our understanding of time and reality on its head. Dali created The Persistence of Memory when he returned to his homeland in Spain after living in Paris. The painting shows bizarre melting clocks, as if they had melted under the hot sun or were stretching like melted cheese. But what's behind this quirky spectacle? Here's the scoop. Dali was inspired by Albert Einstein's theory of relativity and his own thoughts on how internal states can distort our perception of time. So when you look at those clocks that seem to be flowing and melting, remember, it's not just a cool artistic trick. It's a whole concept revealing how fluid time can be in our minds. In the background of the painting is the Catalonia landscape, Dali's homeland, depicted with an unusual surreal twist. This backdrop isn't just beautiful, it immerses us in the artist's personal memories and experiences. When the persistence of memory first hit the exhibition scene, viewers were stunned. How is it possible for clocks to melt like cheese and time to become liquid? This painting instantly made Dali a surrealism superstar and forever changed the way we think about depicting reality. So next time you're gazing at the persistence of memory, think about how Dali was trying to show that time isn't always fixed and rigidly measurable. Maybe it's actually as fluid and changeable as he painted it. This work not only captivates the imagination, but also makes us ponder how we perceive time and reality. Pablo Picasso, The Bombshell Exhibition When Pablo Picasso staged an exhibition of his new works in his Paris studio, he knew it was going to be an event that would shake up the art world. But his real aim wasn't just to wow the audience, it was to make them rethink the very concept of art. At this show, he unveiled Guernica, a painting that became a symbol of horror and suffering. But not many people know that while creating Guernica, Picasso drew inspiration not only from the events of the Spanish Civil War, but also from his personal experiences. He saw Guernica not just as a depiction of a destroyed city, but as a metaphor for the human soul ripped apart. It was his response to the brutality of the world, his way of expressing the rage and pain he felt every day. When one viewer called his works a disaster, Picasso didn't just smirk, he felt a sense of satisfaction, he had achieved his goal. This exhibition wasn't just a showcase of his new work, it was a statement. A challenge to anyone who thought art had to be pretty and understandable, Picasso wanted art to provoke questions, stir emotions, and spark reflection, and he nailed it. Turning Guernica into not just a painting, but a symbol of an entire era. Vincent van Gogh, Beauty from Pain and Suffering Vincent van Gogh, as we know, was always teetering on the edge of genius and madness. When he was asked to create some still lifes for a new cafe in Arles, he seized the opportunity to express his own thoughts and feelings about life and death. He painted sunflowers during one of his deepest emotional crises. For him, these flowers were more than just plants, they became a symbol of the life cycle with its birth, bloom, and decay. He wanted to show how beauty can emerge from pain and suffering, how even in the darkest night there can be light. Instead of merely depicting the flowers, Van Gogh, as in most of his paintings, focused on their texture and color. He used thick brushstrokes to create the illusion that the flowers were almost alive on the canvas. 
His choice of colors, bright yellows, golds, and oranges was intentional. These colors symbolize the sun, light, and life. Yet, as vibrant as these hues were, they were surrounded by darker, muted tones representing the inevitability of withering and death. Let's also touch on the story behind his famous painting, Asterisk Starry Night Asterisk, which was created during one of the toughest times in his life when Van Gogh was in a psychiatric hospital in Saint-Rémy-de-Provence. From the window of his room, he found solace in the endless movement of the stars and moon. On the canvas, he depicted not just a starry sky, but an entire universe in motion, whirls of light and energy conveying a sense of dynamic movement and inner struggle. For Van Gogh, this painting became a symbol of hope and faith that after every dark night, a new dawn follows, and life, with all its storms and anxieties, continues its eternal cycle. We've wrapped up our little journey through the universe of great artists, and I hope you felt the magic and drama that surrounded their lives and work. If you enjoyed these stories and want to learn more about the lives and works of great masters or about traditional or digital art, leave a comment and share your thoughts and ideas on what art stories interest you. Like, subscribe to the channel, and see you next time.